Tell me when. Don't. Hold on. Go ahead. Oh boy, I have my work cut out for me. Welcome. Welcome to another question and answer here. I wanted to start out with a little levity today, but then um, get right into uh, serious issues. Uh, uh, to all our friends out, um, especially in Washington State, we, we send out our prayers and all over the country and all over the world. We send out our prayers for this uh, virus that um, I know that we're going to be able to soon say that it's going to be behind us. So we're praying for that. And um, so feel free if you guys are stuck at home. Uh, could use a could use a little chat myself this today uh, if you want uh, you know contact us and it doesn't have to be about upholstery issues today but of course that's why we're here so um, I just where's wanted, Jimmy where's Jimmy Jimmy's here oh where's Jimmy yeah we asked Jimmy to stay home he's self <laughs> self quarantining himself at home and. Well, uh, his presence is felt here, and we hope that he checks in with us. He's probably online looking at coconut hair. If I browse in the, uh, you know, <laughs> Jimmy has become Jimmy is becoming the world expert of uh, coconut hair specialist, uh, and I think that he's going to be getting calls from all over the world too, probably to, to to check out when things settle down a little bit, to check out his coconut fibers. But anyhow, so a little levity, but uh, really, uh, we have a sectional that came into the shop that. That uh, it's just pretty much all cushions. Um, I think they're like 16, 17, or 18 cushions. And so when you when you think about a cushion for a professional from start to finish, if you're really good, cutting it out, sewing the white pallet piping in this case, sewing the cushion together, and then filling it. I think if you're really good, you can be about an hour and 15 minutes each cushion. So you times that by about 15, and and you can see. Uh, how labor-intensive our jobs can be sometimes. Um, so uh, we're going to get to this job later. I'm going to put this down and talk about the sofa behind me. And uh, before you I get, you want to talk about Pam's post? Yeah, yeah, I do. Project? I want Pam. Pam uh, posted on Facebook, right, on the uh, Broadway Upholstery School Facebook, Patrick. Yes, I'll, I'll print the. Continue. I'll print that out for you so you have it. Yeah, that would be good. I'm going to wait for that, Patrick, or should I go move? Uh, this continue for now. Uh, let okay. you know when I have it. So, I have another big project. This sofa, um, and I, this is the fabric for the sofa. This is a beautiful mahogany uh, sofa. Let me tell you something. It is heavy. And um, we took it out of the house, um, and I, I don't think I've ever lifted a sofa this heavy before. So I know, I'm going to look underneath here now, the stock on this is probably this thick and um, all mahogany or hardwood, um, unbelievable. Really good shape and it's old too. Um, so this is the fabric that we're gonna be using. I just thought I'd, I'd show you that. Today what I'm gonna try to do during this hour is show you how I go about measuring uh, a piece of furniture. I might get into some stripping on it too. Uh, this is the very beginning um, of the job. You don't really have to start with measuring, although I like to start with measuring while it's still intact all the covers on because uh, the customer wants to do it the exact same way. So, this is Pam's post. Let's get to Pam's post. So, I'll put the pictures up. And talk about it. So, Patrick is going to put the pictures up, but she says that she's a founding member, member of the Broadway Upholstery School Forum, and she's finished this little set T, and I have to say it sure was a labor of love, right? <laughs> Much bigger task than I thought, but new paint and beautiful linen fabric made such a difference. Thank you for all the tips along the way. Well, Pam, thank you, and I, I think that you're well on on your way to a fantastic career because I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this a little closer, and I see I see you did a great job. Um, the double piping, uh, did you learn that from us? The, I'll ask you that question because it really looks good. Um, the cushion looks fabulous. I could tell that you've got a lot of experience sewing. sewing. Um, that looks really good. And it's a beautiful looking piece. Um, oh, and she has other pictures of the process, which is always good. I like that. So I'm looking at that. And wow, nice. Oh, and she's got a picture of it when it first came to her, too. Yeah, that, that's, that's unbelievable. So that's good. Thank you, Pam. Keep sending those along. Okay, I'm going to move the fabric, the fabric off. 
Is Jimmy out there yet? Uh, Jimmy's promised, I think, to check in with us. Is he on? Jimmy, but we have a few comments on that. Michaela can... Uh... Okay. I have some comments. Oh, there's Pennywise. Hey, Pennywise. <laughs> There's Jimmy, and Erica also checked Hey, out. Erica, we were worried about you. We're glad you're here. Thank you. I think a week makes a big difference. Last week it was kind of like... Uh, I wonder if Andrew's shop is still open. I wonder if he... Uh, and Andrew, we don't know if Andrew... Well, that's him and Pennywise are the same person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll take some comments now. Well, this be, uh, so Erica says, "Hope everyone, uh, hello everyone. Hope everyone is well. We're still locked down here in the PNW. I'm not sure what that what that means. I'm I'm just curious. Did Erica lock down with a lot of work uh, that she had to do? That would be kind of neat. I'm not sure if she works from home or not, but and uh, yeah, Andrew says howdy, and then there's Jimmy's now on here. Uh oh, Jimmy, we miss you in the studio audience, but you know." Uh, there's a six foot rule here, six foot of separation, right, Patrick? So, so we, we thought it best that uh, and Jimmy stay at home. He's 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 such a lovable guy, you know. He wa always wants to hug you, but he's going to have to resist that for at least a couple of weeks, right, Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy, you know, my idea was maybe we can get you on here remotely somehow. If you have, uh, I don't know if you know how to set that up, but if we could set up a video. At your desk or something, get you on here. That would be something we can do. Oh, that would be good. We could do that for almost anybody, can't we, Patrick? Sure. Well, we'll try that with Jimmy first. We've never done that before. Are there any other comments before we get going? Well, so Andrew's shop, his shop is uh, open, but, of course, a lot less work. Yeah, yeah, that's... Phones stopped ringing completely uh, for at least a week and a half, and I... But uh, be prepared, it'll come roaring back the economy. You, uh, at least we have YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be on here no matter what, so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Unless they quarantine us, Patrick, we, we, we'll we see. Uh, I'll be down here still. Of course, we could be quarantined at work, but that's not very fun, is it? Yeah, we're stuck here with all the furniture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so any other comments before we get going on the sofa? Uh, PNW, Pacific Northwest. I didn't realize that. Pacific Northwest, right. <laughs> I didn't either, Pat. Makes you feel any better. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's been tough. They they've been hit hard in Washington State. So we again we send our prayers out to them. So let's get going on this on the. Well, one more follow up from Erica. So she's been having trouble sourcing fabric. Most of my day is spent doing distance doing. Most of my day is spent doing distance learning for the kids. So she mentioned fabrics and how difficult it is sourcing fabrics. Right. I want to talk a little bit about that, actually. I'm going to come over here to get a couple of books, fabric books. Actually, if you want to pan around here to, to look at our fabric. I don't think we've ever shown you guys our fabric collection. So this is a high-end collection, mainly. I mean, I say high-end, but within the line, there's some reasonably priced fabrics. These books down here. And then they tend to go up in price up this way. So but I, I did want to mention... The art of selling fabric, and I'll tell you, um, Erica, sourcing fabric is one thing. Once you've sourced fabric and you've got a nice line that, um, what you're looking for in a line of fabrics, this happens to be Kravit, which I, I really um, would, would encourage anybody to get. But it does depend on the part of country that you're in, too. If, if, if your price point is low, uh, the Kravit line wouldn't be for you. Uh, but if you, whatever line you decide on, make sure there's a couple of things. Um, you'll know right away, um, uh, do they have a representative that comes out and cleans the books or, or that is attentive to your needs? Uh, that's a very important. Is the availability of the fabrics. You're going to have to check all this out. Sometimes it's a trial period with the company, too, to see how they do. If you're, if you're showing fabrics and um, 9 out of 10 of them are... Um, you know, back ordered or discontinued. That's, that's get away from them because uh, that's just going to affect your business. Um, so what you're looking for is support from the from the representative in your area with the fabrics. If you you're definitely doing the books, your price point depending on your area um, and, and all that. And there's a couple other criteria. Oh, how the 800? Usually these companies have an 800 number. How are they? Are they courteous? Are, are they are they are they there when you call? That's really important. If you're selling a fabric and there's a customer, either online, pres 
online or in person if you're calling. It, you, get, you need quick responses. Is the fabric available? You need that right while the customer is with you. So it's really important that they have all that in place, a fabric company. Uh, once you get your fabric company set up, you need to really um, be good at selling fabric. You really need to be good with color. You really need to carry color in your head. Uh, you really need to almost be like a designer. You don't have to be a designer, actually, if you're selling fabrics. If you're, if you're an upholsterer, a seasoned upholsterer like me, sometimes um, I, I admit color isn't in my number one skill, but uh, dur knowing a fiber and how a fabric's going to work on a particular piece is really important. So here at the shop, we have an expert, Pamela. Pamela Powell is, is unbelievable at uh, picking fabric. She is the best I've seen in 42 years, and she's not a designer. She's not no formal education that way, but she's smart, she knows color, and she knows people. That's really important. The, the last thing I said about people, knowing, knowing your customer, knowing what their needs are. Now that's not to say that even Pamela is going to run into a dead end. You will, you will run into dead ends. You'll run out of fabrics to show people. You'll, you just kind of like want to have to wash your hands at that point. Um, but we have another question. Well, I, I want to mention a couple, uh, but Pam followed up about, yes, yeah, she did learn double welding from us. Oh, fantastic. So Pam, when you guys, is that still up there, Patrick, on a... The what is? Pam, so... Oh, no, I took the, the photo. They can rewind it. They want to see her photo. That was the beginning of the live live show. We had like, here it is. I got the picture here. And, and the picture, uh, it says, <laughs> what do they say about a picture? It's worth a thousand words. I, I look at it this and I'm saying, Pam, you're you, you really, at least in your journeyman or you're approaching uh, master status here with that with the job that you did there. So what happens, you, you were talking about time. Um, once you start getting repetitive in your work and you start doing more and more, your, your time, you'll, you'll find your own ways. And that's what I show people how to save some time when they're doing the work with our videos. But she will get quicker. She will get faster. Not everybody. I think most people get faster. I mean, lightning fast. I've seen people who are lightning fast. Uh, that's unbelievable. I can, I used to be when I was a little younger, lightning fast and good. So those two things together can make you a little money. So keep focusing on, on, on repetitive, get as much work as you can. Uh, even if friends want something done, uh, you know, you can even work something out with them. But the idea is to keep, keep doing it over and over again. That, that's the idea, okay? So as far as I'm getting back to the fabrics, I think I covered everything. We have another question. Uh, this is from Jimmy. Oh, Janine. Hi, Janine. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm sorry. I thought you were Janine. That's awkward. Uh, what's the approach with fabric on a chair to fabric on, on a sofa? Measurements? Yardage? Ooh, actually, Jimmy is talking. I'm not sure if Jimmy's talking about the scale of design. Let's say he is. But oftentimes, um, I pay attention when I'm selling fabrics to the size of the project that I'm doing. I mean, you wouldn't want to put a 36-inch repeat on a slip seat, right, Jimmy? Um, but um, most upholstery fabrics you'll find, um, if you're dealing just in upholstery fabrics like I do at the shop, you're going up to a 15-inch repeat on it or a 16-inch repeat. They just can't simply mill it any bigger than that. So. That does not present too many problems, um, you know, as far as ordering extra. You hear people say, um, even customers say to me, I think I'm going to need extra because there's a repeat in there, right? And I say, not necessarily. So I hold, I, so I, I'm always finding that I'm holding my customers off of spending money. I don't want people to spend unnecessarily. And it's the same thing with foam cushions. So um, um, I guess the point was, I lost my train of thought there, but, oh, so Jimmy, so Jimmy, um, when you're picking a fabric, for instance, a herringbone, I'm not sure if I have a herringbone here. Now. Herringbone fabric sometimes can come um, like uh, five inches wide. Um, that's wide, that can go on a sofa. Um, most herringbones are about an inch wide. You save that for your slip seats and your, and your chairs, even up to a wing chair. So actually, Jimmy, that was a very good question. If you have some more, we'd appreciate it. Any other questions right now? Okay, I think I'm going to get moving. Fabrics are uh, a big deal because if you don't have fabric, you don't have work. Um, and I think most of us can can relate to this who are in the business. Um, oftentimes I notice upholsters um, kind of get, uh, I guess, in a position where 
Um, they don't want to waste too much time selling fabric. That's another thing you have to watch out of. I think this is a final point. You can get bogged down with um, process can take hours. So for an upholster to be away from the bench, you know, that, that can be tough. So I find some upholsters, not me, because I have Pamela, who's, who's here, who's terrific at finding fabric for people um, and their price points and their, and their needs and all that, and don't, not to mention color. <laughs> She's really good. Um, so I have her, but um, I think that some upholsters who are working on their own, sometimes they get frustrated and they just tell a customer to get their own fabric. And, and then you're into, do you charge more on the labor end of things um, if somebody brings their own fabric? You have to be careful with that, too, because some people don't like that. <laughs> most most your clients wouldn't like that. So it's a tricky thing. Fabrics are a tricky thing. So let's start going on this sofa now. So um, we have this big sofa, and um, I'm going to be measuring it up, and I'm going to show you... First of all, I want to say that the client wants this done exactly the same. She likes the style, which is a little unusual. Um, sometimes I encourage people to take away these pipings, but she wants them, so we're going to respect that. Okay, so, and, and the welting is purely um, on this one here. Sometimes it's out of need. Uh, fabric, it can't be railroaded or run sideways, so, so they have to, you know, in a long piece, a big piece like this, you have to break it up like this. But in this case, it's only for design for design reasons, because the fabric, whoever did it last, the fabric could have been railroaded, or you could have eliminated all of these, all of these um, vertical uh, seams, okay? Now between you and me, I don't, I don't particularly like this style. I, I think it would look cleaner uh, the other way, but um, that's okay. The client's always right, right? So, but I'm going to show you, if you guys ever have a piece like this, how, how to measure it. Um, and I'm going to go through the whole process. I think I'm going to have time. So um, unless we get a lot of questions in, I know Jimmy's at home watching, and he's yearning to be here, Jimmy, yearning to be with your coconut fiber, which you left five bags of coconut fiber here. We don't know what to do with it. But anyhow, we wish you were here. So send in your comments and questions. So. I'm going to start like I usually do. I'm going to label everything here. <coughs> I'm going to label um, all the pieces that I need, everything that's on here. So we have an inside back center. <coughs> inside back center. Okay, first of all, we're going to do our little slash marks up and down, side to side, draw a line here. Inside back center, right? left and right inside back. I'm putting IB there. <coughs> I'm going to draw lines this way and I'm going to be filling these in but I label everything first. Okay so the next thing is inside arms, IAs. I'm going to put a little S there. <coughs> can you see that um, uh, uh, Michaela? Can you see that? Can, can you see the writing? And then we, we have center. Yeah, you can use a whiteboard too if you want. Well, I kind of have to move on the go here. Center, uh, seat, center seat, right, and left seat. Okay, that, what I'm, re I'm re referencing from the seam here as the seat to this seam, okay? Then I have, underneath that, we have um, the center panel. We, we want to be specific with that. We'll put front panel, okay? Front panel. Front panel. Left and right panel. Left and right panel. Okay, so, so center panel, left and right. Some people also call them um, boxings, but I call what's on a cushion boxing. I think this is front panel is a better description, and this is our arm panel. We'll get to that in a minute. Might as well get to that now. So we have two. We have arm panels. Two of those, right? Right. So I got all the measurements for the for the front of this sofa, right? Now we, in the back simple. It's outside arms. Right? And outside back. So we've got the whole body 
done here. Okay, so I think I'm going to put the cushions down for now. If we get to the cushions, I'll be happy to um, measure them. Just put them down for now. We also have a throw pillow that we're going to be doing for the client. Put these over here. Okay, so we'll have a separate page for the, for the cushions. Oh, we forgot one thing, the deck. Jimmy's probably going, hey, forgot the deck at home. <laughs> He's going, hey, forgot the deck. Um, the deck is the part, is the portion. Usually I try to put those, the deck with the seat area because the two are connected. So I'm just going to sneak it in here in the deck, okay? Okay, so let's measure. So a lot of times, if you've seen the other videos, you'll, you'll see that... Um, most of these measure, or all the measurements that we do the body with are three inches oversize. Um, this one here is a little different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an exact measurement for the interior pieces, for the center pieces, and I think we're going to do that now. So let's start with the inside deck center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure side to side. I've got 22, and I'm going to add an inch to that for my seam, so it's 23. So I'm going to put a 23 side to side. And then I'm going to put down here exact, okay, just for my, when I, when I go to the table, I know that has to be cut really close, really perfect, 23 exact, because it's a half inch seam line on both sides of that inside back, right? So now I'm going to measure uh, top, up and down on that. Let me just go this way. I'm going to stick my hand in here. Be careful when you do that, you guys, because there could be pins and needles in there. And I'm going to go all the way to the wood frame that's in the, that's in the sofa, all the way to the back where the seam is on the back. That, that is actually 35 inches plus 3, so that's going to be 38 inches. So what I do is I write, I just add the 3 inches in and I write the exact, you know, figure on the paper. Some people, they put 35 plus 3, it's up to you, whatever you guys want to do. But I like, I like just getting the final figure down there. So left and right inside back. Now this is going to be different because... The left, and has, the left and right inside back has to go inside the sofa and be tacked down. So it's going to be a lot longer side to side. So it's, it's going to be the same up and down, 38, right? So I'm going to stop right here. Do we have any questions? Uh, nope, just Lucas says, hope everyone is good and healthy. Yeah, thank you, Lucas. I can't remember where Lucas was from. Do you remember? Belgium. Oops. Belgium. So how are things in Belgium? I, I haven't, I mean, we know that 128 countries lost count, lost count were affected by this virus. But we'll ask Lucas how he's doing and how his country is doing. So uh, if we can ask him that, that would be great. And then we're going to come all the way around here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put the and I have the actual measurements 31 plus 3, so we're going to go 34. See how much bigger that is? We've got 23 in the interior, which is an exact measurement, and 34 left and right inside back. Okay? Okay, so the next one is the, are the inside arms. So um, on the inside arms, they, uh, they slope. Um, it's always the furthest measurement, so I'm going to tackle, I'm going to go to the back here. And take this measurement. I'm going to go into the into the sofa where the, where the wood frame is, where we're going to be we're going to be tacking. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to go 30 inches plus three. That's 33. It's Jimmy's. He must be me, Jimmy must be mesmerized at the work that's happening here because I haven't heard him say anything unless he just took off. Uh, he actually just says, "Will we see this as an ongoing project?" Oh, Jimmy, I wish I could. Oftentimes the shop is like perpetual motion here, you know, and and I'm under constant demand to get a job out. It doesn't always line up with the filming schedule, um, but um, it, things are constantly moving in and out, so I'm not sure. I don't think this is going to be, and I know Jimmy is chomping at the bit to do a sofa um, in class, and I'm still trying to work that out because we have very limited space here. Um, it's it's a, a retail space here, in Massachusetts, especially the Boston area, is at a premium, really. So we don't have much space. Now we do. We are teaching over at the Lexington Arts and Crafts Center, 
So there's a possibility, they have a much bigger space over there. Possibility is we, gr hopefully we grow with them. Um, we just started doing a class with just chairs. Hopefully if we grow with them, we can start doing sofas and love seats. And uh, the advantage to that is I think people would, would really see uh, a huge savings um, by doing their own sofas and love seats, you can imagine. Uh, so we have another question. Um, well, this is, uh, Lucas answered your question before. He okay. says, in Belgium we're in soft lockdown. Soft it says, lockdown. but luckily we managed to move into a new house this weekend before the government announced the lockdown. So now I have a new workshop finally and all the time to organize it. Wow, good for you, Lucas. Well, we're glad that, um, <laughs> that you had success there and, and we hope that, um, we heard some good news today, and we heard that there might be some drugs that have been on the shelf that might be effective with this virus. Um, so we're working in this country, the, uh, our FDA is really working uh, to solve this problem, and I, I really have full confidence. So hopefully that will happen soon. Jimmy um, says, damn. <laughs> I guess he was looking forward to that, seeing that more of that sofa. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jimmy. But I'm gonna measure it all up. That helps. Um, by the way, this this is almost like the measurements for a slipcover. What we're doing, um, with one exception, I think slipcovers you need you need more space inside. So the the up and down measurement may be more in slipcovers. The side to side measurements are probably about the same. So if you're doing a slipcover. Uh, but we are offering those slip color classes soon with Bernice. So um, I forgot what I was doing here. So I have to measure this again because I forgot the measurement up and down. Thirty plus three, thirty-three inches up and down on the inside out. Furthest point, right? The furthest point. Same thing. Now here's where a lot of people get stuck on this measurement, the side to side measurement on the seat. But look what you have to do. Now, I see a lot of this. People go like this, and they get this measurement. And by the way, the fabric's underneath this panel. Let's remove this panel just to make it a little easier for you guys to see. So by the way, I'm going to be stripping this with just a, a chisel and my side cutters if I get to that. That's all, that's all I need to strip the furniture. So let's just pop this off. Usually you just pop this off. It's held in by brads. Usually it just pops off. This is coming off fairly easy. I'll show you the brads in the back of this. So what's interesting about this is that most fabrics, when you put a most upholstery fabrics, when you put a brad, if the brads go right through the front, believe it or not. Now there are other methods to do this. I don't advise the other methods where you could put a nail, you can put a nail in the back with the head down here and the, and the point out this way. And then, and then staple it down or put a piece of cardboard through it and staple the cardboard. I don't know if you're following me. Um, I don't recommend that. Usually people put like one, two, three, or four in that way. And then what they do is they hammer it with the mallet this way. I don't advise that because oftentimes the nail turns and then it, it, it damages the fabric. So that's why picking out an upholstery fabric is so important in a job like this because Actually, I'm going to show you with the brad. I hope I can get my hands on a brad. Um, actually, you know what? Let's take one of these out and show you. I just want to show you something. So this is a brad. Okay. So definitely, though, I want to tell you, brads, this is probably the tip of the world, of, of the best tip you're ever going to get from me. Because you can take a brad from the box, get yourself your panel. You, you did a beautiful job on your panel arm. And then put the brad in and the oil residue is left on your fabric. And that would be a bad thing. So what you do is you pilot this a few times, three or four times, through preferably the same fabric or scrap fabric. Get all the oil residue off of it. Okay, and this goes, uh, I'll tell you, I don't like using the pneumatic gun with those brads in it too. Because I feel the head, first of all, those um, are square headed, believe it or not. They don't go through as easy. Oftentimes they leave a little bit of a tear in the fabric. I like to put these in by hand. So I, I have the brads and then um, I set it up. They, this is what they did and I want to show you. I just want to show you. Can you get, there's a brad right, there's two brads, there's three brads right there, Michaela, right? Let's see if you could pick up where the brads went through the fabric because it went right through the front of the fabric, right? Can't see it, can you? I can't. 
So let me just show you. I'm going to pilot it back. I'm going to go back with it. It doesn't even come back, which is good. I'll tell you what happens with fabric, with upholstery fabric. That's why you need to use it, is that when you... Just get a piece of that. I don't know if the mic's going to be able to pick this up, but you know... Yeah. When, you, when it makes a popping noise, you know that it just separated the threads and then it goes all the way through. You hammer it down and the threads move back uh, that, that have been displaced. Instead of, now if you had a cotton cloth, this is why you don't want really cotton cloth. You don't want to show your client a cotton cloth on a, on a job like this and then have her say she wants to do it the same because it presents a problem for your front panels specifically. So upholstery fabric with a nice weave is always the most desired. Do we have any other questions, people? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, I was about to. I popped the panel off. Now I'm gonna, now I can. I can show you where the fabrics come in. The inside arm gets tacked underneath the panel, as you can see it now, and the outside arm comes this way underneath the panel, and then you upholster your panel and you brad it on, right? So I'm just gonna check to make sure there are no brads sticking out this way, because I don't want to get stuck. Okay, so now now I can show you the accurate side to side measurement. And this is a tricky measurement because you actually have to start it in the back like this. So remember, you're only cutting rectangles and squares, mainly rectangles here. You don't want to try to cut to the slope of an arm, right? Now I say I want to just it's I'm stating the obvious to me, but I think some people might try to, you know, cut this with the slope. You don't want to do that. But you have to measure it like, so I measure it like to here, I get the 35 lined up and then I bring it down this way. I'm at 41 plus 3, that's 44 inches. 44 inches. That's big, isn't it? That is a big cover, 44 inches. So there, there's our inside arms, 33 by 44. Okay, so now we have the deck. The deck is the portion from the seat to the back and side to side. So this is what we call a self-deck, and um, I hope I have enough fabric to do this, and sometimes, you know, we, we come close to the fabric, but the reason that's important on this is because you have down cushions that kind of tend to separate a little bit, and then from across the room, you might see if it's, a, sometimes we use a decking fabric, I'm going to go get that to show you. I'm back. So, so this is a decking, a typical decking fabric. Usually it's beige. That's about it. I think they have, might have other choices, but I'm not sure. But this is what I use. So, so you can see. Let's just put this in just to show you. So it would be in the back. It would be the seat would be the fabric, and then you'd have this in the back. So sometimes I'm just going to put this over. If you have a bench cushion, one long cushion, sometimes you can get away with that. It saves it saves two or three yards of fabric. Um, however, if I'm running short on fabric, what I'm going to do is, um, let me just show you. I'm going to run a piece of fabric between the cushions so it would look like something like this. I don't know if you can see that, Michaela. So that when, the, when these separate, you only see fabric underneath. Okay, so that's a good tip too. Um, that's if you're if if you're close on fabric. Um, if you have ample fabric, the self deck is always the way to go. Okay, so let's remove these. Well, we're learning a lot today. Any questions so far about this? Um, just a comment from Lauren. Oh, Lauren's says, here. I'm turning in late, but wanted to say thank you for sharing your knowledge and skill with us. Sorry. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. That's those type of comments. I'll be honest with you. You know, we have we we have some negative comments too, but we're big boys. We can we can take it. Uh, but those positive comments are the ones that keep us going. I think, right, Patrick? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we really enjoy it. Any that. feedback? So any good? Nice fe any feedback? Patrick says. Yeah, even negative stuff. We can work on that and try to fix it. Yeah. Out. By the way, Patrick, we did get a negative comment on one of the videos on YouTube and they said they saw my back more than they saw me. Maybe that was But right, that was an old video. That's before we had multiple camera angles. That and then fun. we were thinking about you Should guys. Solved, yeah. We were thinking, 
we were thinking about removing the, the old videos, but somebody said, I think it was Janine, she said, no, don't do that. She said, because it sees, it, it sees this, the, how we evolved, Patrick. Well, so Every YouTube channel has that. You know, they all start out, with, very rarely does a channel start out with the high production, you know. Well, see, I don't know anything about this, because Patrick does that. He does the production, but... I like the fact that, um, I guess I like the fact that we have the old videos up then, you know, some of them are really corny too, because we started, honestly, we started it as kind of a distraction and kind of for fun, right, Patrick? Right. And, you know, I think there's one there where, where we just recreated with these cushions uh, a little something that we did on one of the videos where the cushions fall over. It's kind of corny, but yeah, we like to have fun too. So I was just taking that uh, welting off the panel, and I'm just cleaning it up while I'm talking to I'll you. I say, Lucas said, I also wanted to say thank you. This is a good way to get my mind off things right now. And that's what that's why we wanted to do it this week. We yeah. Were, we were going to forget it, but then we were like, oh, people yeah. will probably, you know, they could use this this week. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we are. Now that we see the response, I'm glad we did this, Patrick. Glad right. we did this. We'll, we'll do it until we can't <laughs> yeah. do it anymore. I hope I hope that that's not going to be long. So look, so this panel is all uh, stripped clean. I'll just take the fabric off a little later. So let's remove this. Let's measure the deck now. On the deck. So I'm going to go from the seam, the seat, to the back rail, right? It's 30 plus 3 is 33. And then we go side to side. I'm going to go in here, make sure I'm at the, at the rail that I'm going to be tacking on. And my tape measure is not long enough, but I'll go 60 plus 18 plus 3. So that's 78 plus 3 is 81, right? 81. Okay, so now let's go to the center seat should be the same as the back. Uh, it should be 23, it should be 22. Actually, this is curious. Why is that longer? Let's just measure this again. So we've got 22 in the back, and we've got 23 on the front. So that must have been a little bit of a mistake on the part of the upholsterer. We are going to make it the same as the back. We are going to make it 23. Center seat 23. And we might as well go down and go center panel 23. 23, 23. Okay. Um, and then let's measure from the seam. We, let's get our vertical measurement. That's our horizontal we just did. Our vertical measurement is 8 plus 3 is 11. I'm going to pause right here for a second. And. Just make sure there are no comments or questions, Patrick. Do we have any old comments and questions? Not this week. There's barely any. I think it's because of what's going on. Yeah, I think people have been really, you know, concentrating on other stuff, you know. Uh, so we didn't get, usually during the week after our last live, we get a lot of um, comments that, that we answer. So. Well, after last week on Thursday, I think after that Friday was when things started getting really crazy. So. That's right. We we're still unaware. We we're, all, we're in the last week, we were kind of in the dark. I think we're starting to see a clearer picture. Uh, but I did want to mention something um, that they said there was going to be a spike the next couple of days and they didn't want people to panic because all the testing is starting to come through. So that people shouldn't panic about that. So um, we still need to maintain um, calm, right? So I'm glad to hear that all of our people, I think, checked in today, Patrick, right now. And I think it's great. Except for Janine. I'm not sure how, th I, might, I don't know what time it is in Australia right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We haven't heard from Janine. If Janine's out there, she please. She doesn't really get the tune in. I guess late or early. Or yeah. Something. I don't know. I hope she contacts us either through, if she's not live, I think if she contacts us later, that would be great just to see how she, just to check in on her. So now we have... Uh, the right and left seat we have to measure, okay? So that goes all the way over to here, right? To this piping. 26 plus 3 is 29. Hold on one second. I'm going to 29 on that. Hold on one second. Yes. 
Um, Pam says, I always learn something when watching and am very happy to be watching this week in particular. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, I am awesome says, going to be a baby boom in nine months. They will be called the Coronials. <laughs> says, I'm so grateful for having a good distraction. It's going crazy teaching the kids. They go to a French immersion school and I don't speak French. <laughs> I'll keep up the good work. Are they doing, I wonder if they're doing online classes. I heard a lot of teachers are, are going to online classes teaching even as early as daycare. They're, they're, they're doing the songs and things like that. So we're, we're, we're kind of like um, adjusting to this, aren't we? I think we're all doing a great job. And part of the reason we're here now is trying to offer some, a little bit, really, a small bit um, for you guys. So, uh, did I measure? I lost my train of thought. Uh, we got the 11 inches up and down. Hold on a second. Lucas, Lucas has a question. That, uh, okay. It's kind of a, a good question. Is that too um, okay. He says... How are you guys dealing with this situation? Are you still accepting walk-ins or do you only deliver now? I've been on the fence about what to do in terms of coming into contact with customers. <coughs> Actually, what we're doing is um, limiting hours and um, I still have my door um, open during those hours. Sometimes I close the door depending on, like today, I had the door closed except for a customer that was coming. I'm playing it by ear really because I'm there's new information all the time. Right now, as of today, they're talking about contacts, uh, surfaces like metals. Um, it, the virus can last longer. Um, believe it or not, I heard that fabrics are not highly affected by this. Um, you know, it doesn't. So that's good news for our industry, I guess. But hard surfaces like uh, plastic, especially, I guess, um, it, it lasts. I heard it could last for a, a day or two. I think I heard so. Um, so as far as my clients, I guess I could speak more of the, the block here. So we have, we have a variety of businesses in this block. And we're a mixed use here in Arlington in this area. This, this residential and commercial. We're, we're like um, a commercial block here in resident, and the rest is residential. So um, our caterer, God, God love our caterer, she was the first to get hit because she did work for a lot of the colleges in the area. So she got hit first, a lot of cancellations there. The barber's been here, so that, that's, that's, that's a good thing. We have a baker who just started a, a business here who um, closed for the last two days, but she's offering something very unique for the weekend. She's, she's just focused on her bread now not her pastries and she's going to be um marking out on the sidewalk because we have this six feet um perimeter and she's going to be marking six foot lines out and she's going to be offering bread on the sidewalk so and we know that uh, we're going to have good weather this weekend here so that's going to work for her so we're adjusting um i i think as we move forward i i've already thought about uh for people who um they can leave their furniture out in the driveway or on a porch and I can come pick it up, reupholster it and bring it back in the same fashion. We should just watch the weather really. So, so um, I'm not at that point yet. Uh, today I, I did have um, a couple of pickups that I, I had. Um, so we're still not in that situation I think in, the, in, in our area where we're in a lockdown like, like Erica. Um, so. Um, we're, we're doing the best we can. Um, we know we're going to come through this, you know, as a business. It might, might even be a stronger business as a result. Because I think people are really going to give us, um, you know, they're going to patronize uh, all their small businesses, we hope. Uh, I'm sure they are, you know. So. And another thing is, too, we started the, the online classes at a perfect time. Yeah, you know, the online classes. I know there's still uh, maybe a lot of money. People are trying to spend money, but. Uh... I don't think they're a lot. I think that they're, they're inexpensive, but I think that's a good distraction, along with the YouTube videos, which are free. So take advantage of the YouTube videos, definitely. But we noticed there's something curious that the, that things have gone down. The YouTube channel has gone down, right, Patrick? Yeah. It's it's not. We we thought that would be the opposite. You know, that people would be home, but maybe maybe um, they're too busy doing other things, <laughs> like shopping for food. But anyhow, let me get back to the sofa, unless there's other questions or comments. There is. Okay. Um, Sandra 
says, hi from England. I'm relaxing watching you with a cup of tea. You are oh. my go-to channel whenever I need help with a project. Oh, good. One question, though. Why is the back measured exact and not plus three? So, this is the inside back. Inside back. So, in this particular piece, we have a piping. I'm not sure if Sandra can see there's a piping here. So that measurement has to be um, exact. In other words, uh, we measured uh, 22, and we um, are having a half of an inch seam just on the uh, just on the centerpiece, inside back center, right? Um, half inch seam on each side, and that's where we get our 23. Um, on the ends, um, we we did our we did our three inch um, on the ends. Um, and um, we just did this, the seat and the panel, I'm getting to the panel now, is the same thing on the center points, right? So usually when I do these, uh, uh, very rarely do I, do I have, um, I have a note here exact for my inside back center. I, to remind myself that I have to be careful cutting that. And then um, down here in my center seat, exact, exact, right? Center seat. My left and right seat can be, can be my long measurements, right? And then my panel front exact. So I have, this is a little unusual on, on uh, my first measuring, to have three exact measurements. That's very unusual, okay? I'm not even getting to the cushions yet. Um, so I, I actually was just getting now to the, the center, unless there's a follow-up question there. I hope that answered Sandra's question. But I wish I was there having a cup of tea with her. We have relatives in Yorkshire. I wonder where she is from. Yorkshire is very nice. We visited there. Um, very beautiful. Um, center panel. Let's, uh, let's get the center panel front up and down. So let's see what we got here. So I got an exact measurement of five. So I'm going to add three to that also. So we got eight inches. Eight inches. Okay. So now we got a uh, left and right panel. Uh, it's still the same eight inches. Any more questions before I go on? Okay. Eight inches. Okay. This one. And now I'm going to measure the side to side. So we got 27 plus 3. That's 30. Okay. Now let's get to our arm panels. I'm going to come right out here to get this for you. Okay. So we're going to measure this up and down. We got 21 plus, you know, on these ones here, folks, um, I don't cut them to three inches. What I do is because this is such a delicate upholstery job that I think if you slim this down to two inches, okay, overall, okay, so I got 20 plus two, so we're going to go 22 up and down, 22, and then the side to side measurement. The reason that for that is that you don't want to be having the, the layers o the overlay, overlaying this way. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm cutting it down to the 2 inches. So 5, 6 inches plus 2 is, is 8 inches. So not as much, on, not as much um, extra on this panel, okay? So 8 inches. Okay, so um, I'm not going to be able to turn the sofa to show you, uh, but I'm going to measure them. Uh, now it's the outside arms. Uh, people usually have a better time measuring outsides because they're not going inside the furniture, you know, like in, in the furniture. It pretty much is what it is. You're looking at what you need, right? I don't know if that makes sense. Just make sure you give yourself the three inches. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to measure the up and down. The furthest point, 25 plus the three, that's 28. And then side to side, 36 and 39. 28 by 39. Okay, so the outside back, the up and down measurement on the outside back. <clears throat> Is Jimmy still here? Did Jimmy leave? I haven't heard from him in a while. Gee, thanks, wow, Jimmy. Thanks for all your support. Right on cue, yeah. <laughs> What did he say? I, could, I know he couldn't stay quiet for that long. <laughs> what did he say? He's got some funny stories about Jimmy. 
Uh, he said he said good class, Kevin, as usual. Very nice. Oh, he's been a great Stay guy. Safe. Isn't he a good supporter? Where's a sign? Remember? Oh yeah, Jimmy usually in the studio audience when Jimmy is here, usually he has a sign that he, he works very hard usually at, in creating these signs. Not, I mean it's just one in ink he said, pick me, uh, one of the questions. <laughs> and the way he was, remember how he shook that sign, Patrick? Yeah. I think that was that a was little... very disturbing. He put a lot of work into that and he just destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we hired a, a art director. To make that sign, and, and he treated it like it was nothing. <laughs> Let's get the side, the side to side measurement over here in the back. Uh, Lucas said it was unusually quiet without Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you like Jimmy, if you like Jimmy, let us know. We'll keep him on. He's he's in a trial trial basis. And <laughs> has been for quite some time. <laughs> 80, 80s, I'm just kidding. We love Jimmy. Actually, Jimmy has done some. On the online class, if you guys have ever seen him, I think um, he's really worked hard on his pieces, and I think they've come out nice. Michelle, of course, Michelle, and um, who else, Patrick? Bernice is going to be coming up with some more. And, you know, as we move forward, it's, the, it's, it's, it's really exciting to see people finish their projects. What we're finding with the online classes is that um, we designed them for six weeks, but they've been they've been extending a lot long because we're learning so much, and and, and um, people are learning so much. And we want people to take their time. We want people to do a good job, because like I was talking earlier, speed comes later. Don't don't be frustrated with whatever your speed is, because you you don't get speed right away. You get that by doing and doing and doing. So you'll see. Anyhow, so I've got all my measurements. I did. Um, I wanted to go on to the next thing that I wanted to show, um, unless there's a question and answer. No. Okay. So I'm just. I hope you can read some of my writing. Why do I do this? You might be asking. Why does he? Why does he do it the way he does? Right. So it's very simple. I'm trying to simplify this for you guys. So I've, I've taught a lot o over the years, and I find that this is the best method. Okay, to get all your measurements, and usually when a student does their measurements, I come and check all their measurements, so to, and then we recorrect if we have to. So, so these measurements are the corrected measurements or the right measurements. The first time, right, you'll get better, you'll get good at that. So um, when you put your fabric down, and it's a non-railroadable fabric, it's running the, the correct way, or railroaded, um, these measurements are very important. This measurement's important when a fabric is running the correct way. Let me show you what I mean by that. I know people out there might not know what I'm talking about. So, the fabric runs this way, right? So these measurements become very important because you, what you're doing before you start cutting now, you have, to, you have to use your math a little bit. You have to determine what is the best use of the fabric. So in a perfect world, if that's 54 inches, all my all my pieces would be 54 inches or 27 in a perfect world, right? 27, and I needed two of them. That's half the distance, right? So when I'm looking down, honestly, when I, I, I at a quick glance, these are horrible measurements for, for as far as conserving fabric. Look, I'll tell you why. 34, bad. 44, not so good. It, that's a, you could almost say that you could use the width of the fabric for that. So I'm going to put a little asterisk there, or number one, because I probably will take that the inside arms first, and I'll probably couple that. Look, I'll couple that with the arm panels down here. So look, this is what I try to do. I'll, I guarantee you guys, if you start cutting as you go, get if you're doing that, get rid of that habit right away. You'll obviously you'll run out of fabric almost every time, and I know there's a lot of people that do that. Figure it out first. Get your good measurements cut first. So in this case, so I have the inside arms. I probably I, I, this is really good. I'm gonna I'm even gonna bracket these two inside arms and panel. That's perfect use, almost perfect use of the fabric. And I would be cutting in two yards of the fabric, right? Two yards would already be gone because it's 33 inches and 33 inches because I need two inside arms, right? One yard, two yards, right? And I'm gonna get my panels, my front panels. What do I do with it? Well, I, my front panels. So I'm going to get my inside, one inside arm, another inside arm, and my front panels out of two yards of fabric, right? So we have a, some more Jimmy comments. Uh, Terry says, 
We love Jimmy and the banter between him and Kevin. Good. And then um, I am awesome says I'm missing those little videos of Jimmy looking for stuff. We were right. supposed that was supposed to start. Well, we were supposed to start our new series. We ran into a problem with that, right? Because Jimmy, uh, there was a moving company. They were they were moving somebody out, and Jimmy thought that the furniture was was for his for the taking. <laughs> That. He even broke into a car at one point. <laughs> we have to give him further instruction that this is only abandoned furniture, not <laughs> not furniture that's being moved from one apartment to the other. <laughs> we're just kidding, Jimmy. Just no, kidding. but we're, that was the next project we were supposed to start. But of course, with this going on now, yeah. it's going to be delayed a little bit. But we uh, had that's a, still coming. That's going to be the next thing. It's going to be on YouTube. We had a lot of one 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 that we're really particularly interested in doing is the. It's going to be, honestly, it's going to be a recreation of a true story of a sofa. Well, some might be real. We don't know yet. Well, yeah, but this one's going to be real. I and mean, there is stuff laying around on, on, on sidewalks that you can find. Well, I know. But that one about the sofa going out to sea, we had a major New England storm. The sofa came in. I mean, the storm came in and took this sofa and, and all the other contents of the house, the beachside house, out to the ocean. And, and the couple, uh, tragic, you know, it was their second home, so it wasn't that. I mean, still lost a home and the contents, but um, they were walking three days later, hand in hand. Now, I'm not going to walk hand in hand with Jimmy, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to recreate most of this. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but this uh, older couple walking hand in hand, this is a true story. And, and uh, you know, they're feeling bad about losing, you know, the contents of their home. And guess what they find on the sofa? They find the sofa. It's actually a love seat, so that makes it even better, right? So they found it. it had washed. The only thing that washed back was the love seat. Everything else is gone. You know. Yeah, we'll have old Tom Hanks play, and that's good. Maybe Jimmy. Maybe who do we get? Who do we get to co-star with Jimmy? Tom on that? Hanks and uh, who no, else? Who's no, it has Jimmy? to be an. It has to be an actress. <laughs> hey, who does he like? Let's not go. Let's not go down that road. No, we won't go down that road. Anyhow, so <laughs> so I wanted to get back to our measurements. So we we start off to a good. Unless we have any other questions or comments from Jimmy. People are tuning out left and right now, I bet. Yeah, forget those. So, so the, you get the idea. The further, you, the further you get into your measurements, the more difficult it becomes, right? You, you're not going to be able to get those good measurements. But let's, let's go to the next measurement. Now, this is in the case of running the fabric the correct way like this. Now, let, so you get the idea. So now let's turn the fabric, and we're going to be finishing up with this, I think, Patrick. Turn the fabric. So if you guys have questions, you might want to ask them now or comments. We hope we didn't scare Jimmy away. No, I think he got mad. I think he's mad. I think he left in a huff. So this is, when we run a fabric this way, that's called railroading, right? So I probably would be doing this if we, we could eliminate the seams. I'm just going to let that fall because it is going to fall. Let's just put that there and show you on the uh, uh, measurements now what becomes really the important measurement on a railroaded fabric are these measurements. Okay, so right away I go to my outside arms and my outside back. Look at that. 27 and 28. It's 55, but I'll go to my fabric to measure. Some fabrics are 55. I think this is 54, but what I'll do is I'll go remeasure. I know that I can take this down to 27, right? Because I still, I'll still have enough. So that's what I look for. Perfect use of the fabric. That's also a two yard piece that's only used for, for three pieces of, of goods. So you get the idea. You always start with your good measurements while you're cutting. So and the other thing you do as you're cutting along, make sure that you don't cross cut after you get all your good measurements. So you're going to end up with the piece of fabric that's, you know, that looks like a jigsaw puzzle. So that piping, you, you're always concerned about long, long sections of fabric for piping because you don't want to seam it. Does that make sense? I wish I had time to actually cut this job out. We didn't get to the cushions, okay, but we can do that another time. But I want to say thank you all for, for you know, joining us. And thank you for all your support, all your continued support. And we're going to get through this thing, right? So we'll see you next time.